Hello, my name is Florence and this is The Know. Here are today's top stories. Invasion of Rafa closes in as talks on a hostage deal continue. Tory MP defects to Labour Party as he criticises the government's handling of the NHS. Police have identified the remains of a man found in Salford. And Hamza Youssef quits as the First Minister, ahead of a no-confidence vote. Keep watching to find out more. Israel is building up its military force around Gaza's southern border, where 1.1 million civilians are currently taking refuge. The military is preparing for a ground invasion of Rafah, the last city in the south of the Strip that has not been invaded by Israel. According to Israeli officials, there are currently four Hamas battalions remaining in Rafah and have upped airstrikes in the city. Two battalions of elite Israeli paratroopers are reportedly preparing for the invasion, followed by a large number of regular forces. Israel's allies in the West, including the UK and the US, have warned the country that an invasion of Rafah will lead to catastrophic civilian casualties. Speaking on the 9th of April, United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken reiterated his government's position on an invasion of Rafah. There is a lot of work to be done, and it remains our conviction that um, major military operations in, uh, in Rafah uh, would um, be extremely uh, dangerous for um, civilians who would be caught in, uh, in harm's way. As the Israeli military prepares for the invasion of Rafah, talks on a hostage deal and a ceasefire are still ongoing. A deal from Israel brokered by Egypt is currently being debated by Hamas, the details of which have not been released. Hamas's latest proposal for a hostage deal includes offering one kidnapped IDF soldier for 50 released Palestinian prisoners and or a hostage pensioner for 30 inmates. An unnamed senior Israeli official has said that they are willing to give one last chance to reach a hostage deal that would prevent the invasion of Rafah. During a meeting with the Egyptian intelligence delegation, the unnamed official made it clear that if there was no progress in the talks, the invasion would go ahead. 34,000 people have been killed in Gaza since the start of the war, two-thirds of whom are women and children, according to the Gazan Health Ministry. The conflict began after Hamas attacked Israel on October the 7th, killing over 1,200 Israelis and taking over 200 as hostages back into Gaza. A senior Tory MP has defected to the Labour Party over the weekend in a massive blow to Rishi Sunak. Former Health Minister Dan Poulter quit the Conservative Party, which he said had become a nationalist party of the right that no longer valued the National Health Service. Keir Starmer welcoming the MP crossing the Commons floor to his side, tweeted on Saturday saying, My party is back in the service of working people. Our mission is to grow the economy and rebuild our public services. I'm delighted that Dan will be helping us get the NHS back on its feet. It's time to end the Conservative chaos, turn the page and get Britain's future back. Wes Streeton, the Shadow Health Secretary, tweeted, Proud to welcome Dr Dan Poulter to the Labour Party. As a frontline clinician, he's seen the damage that 14 years of Conservative government have done to our NHS. Delighted to have his support and look forward to working with him, especially on mental health reform. He later tweeted that Dan Poulter had not defected to save his seat, but to save the NHS. Early on Monday morning on a visit with Dan Poulter, Keir Starmer promised a mental health overhaul. We have a mission on health which includes mental health and I'm really pleased that Dan Poulter has now joined us and will support that work. And in leaving the Conservatives and coming to Labour, Dan has said that that's driven by his sense of wanting to support and ensure the future of the NHS and only Labour is going to do that. I actually think that he probably speaks for very many uh, Tory voters who equally think that their party has drifted away from what it once was. Greater Manchester Police believe they have identified the human remains found at a nature reserve in Salford on the 4th of April. Detective Superintendent Lewis Hughes gave an update on the investigation on Sunday. The investigation team have worked on this case for 25 days now and since day one it's been a priority to identify our victim. This is a complicated and challenging case. Human remains have now been recovered at three locations on the Salford district. We've also established a crime scene at the victim's home address. Furthermore, relevant evidence has been located at a warehouse in Bury. Searches are likely to go on for a number of days. We believe we have identified our victim, although formal identification has not yet taken place. 
We have deployed specially trained officers to support the victim's family at this understandably difficult time. Two suspects in police custody, Michael Pachowski and Marcin Majakowicz, have been formally charged in connection with the murder and will appear in court today. A passerby made the grisly discovery of the human torso wrapped in plastic, with police soon forming a cordon in the area. Greater Manchester Police have cordoned off four crime scenes across the region in connection with the investigation. A formal ID of the victim is expected to be released within the next week. And finally, First Minister Hamza Youssef has quit ahead of a confidence vote into his leadership in government. And while a route through this week's motion of no confidence was absolutely possible, I am not willing to trade my values and principles or do deals with whomever simply for retaining power. Therefore, after spending the weekend reflecting on what is best for my party, for the government and for the country I lead, I've concluded that repairing our relationship across the political divide can only be done with someone else at the helm. I have therefore informed the SNP's National Secretary of my intention to stand down as party leader and ask that she commences a leadership contest for my replacement as soon as possible. In order to ensure a smooth and orderly transition, it is my intention to continue as First Minister until my successor has been elected, particularly as the Parliament will be debating some incredibly important legislation in the coming days and the coming weeks. Hamza Yusuf's leadership was in turmoil after he collapsed his party's coalition deal, the Butte House Agreement, with the Scottish Green Party. Soon after the coalition deal was collapsed, a vote of no confidence was called by the Scottish Labour Party. The Scottish Green Party announced on the 25th of April that they would be supporting the motion. Today, the First Minister decided to tear up that agreement to end the Butte House Agreement. And so we no longer have confidence of, in a progressive government in Scotland doing the right thing for climate and nature. So the Scottish Green MSPs will not be supporting Hamza Youssef in a vote of no confidence. Hamza Youssef had intended to fight for his leadership, even as late as this Friday, vowing to keep going as his party's leader. No, I fully intend to not just uh, win that vote, but I intend to fight uh, to make sure that the government stays up, not just uh, the government continues to deliver on the priorities of the people, uh, like, for example, investing in affordable housing. So there's all that political game playing happening from the opposition that will not be taking part in it. We'll be getting, uh, of course, on with the job. And when the vote comes, I fully intend to win. Mr Youssef required the support of at least one member of the opposition at Holyrood, as his government is currently in the minority, but had failed to either get an agreement with Alex Salmon's Alba party or patch things up with the Greens. Thanks for watching and know. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to The Mirror for more daily news updates.